Hey, welcome everybody to uh, Thermal Energy, Lesson 1.4, Molecules and Temperature. Uh, molecules and Temperature. We're really trying to make this connection um, and, uh, you know, something with our understanding of what temperature actually is, because most of us understand temperature, right? Something's hot or something's cold, it, you know, or it falls in between. We have numbers to add to it, like 70 degrees, uh, 30 degrees. Um, but what we're really trying to do, again, in this unit is change our understanding a little bit to include this idea of temperature being related to molecular motion, um, which is a big switch <laughs> from, you know, what we're normally used to, like, oh, this coffee is hot, to, oh, the molecules in this coffee are, are, are really moving. Um, so, you know, it's... It's, it's, it's a big switch, but we're going to try to get there, and uh, we, we got some stuff today to help us with that. Uh, let's start off with warm-up. Almost there. It really wants to load. Look at that. It's kind of going off to the side, isn't it? Wow. It's, it's becoming a, a thing of its own. Uh, eventually, it's going to sprout a new head, um, and you know we'll have a whole new Mr. Wigan. Uh, I, it's budding is what it's called, B-U-D-D-I-N-G. Look it up. Yeast do it. Anyways. Um, we're revisiting uh, the article Absolute Zero. This is what we left off with in the last lesson. Uh, and there's a quote here. So let's let's read the directions. It says, read the following quote from the article uh, Absolute Zero and answer the questions below. If necessary, refer to the article in the Amplify library. You can go to it right there. That's pretty handy. Uh, here's the quote. This is because temperature is a measure of average molecular movement. And there is a limit to how slowly something can move. After all, if something slows down completely, it just stops moving. Interesting. You might want to go back and read that quote in the whole context of the article and find out where it is. Uh, but we have a couple questions here. The first one, is there a limit to how cold things can get? You're going to say yes or no. Um, and then explain your answer using evidence from the article. You could just use evidence from that quote right there, or you could go back to the article and read it a little bit more and refresh your memory. Uh, but go ahead, do that and come on back to me. Hopefully you did it. We're going to talk about it right now. Uh, we should have said, yes, there is a limit. And hopefully this right here, there is a limit, you know, kind of gave that away, even though it's talking about it differently. So is there a limit to how cold things can get? Well, what is cold? Temperature is a measure of average molecular movement. Okay. So it's how fast molecules are moving. So there's a limit to how slow something can move. So we know, we should have seen by this point, the hotter something gets, like in the simulation, the faster those molecules move. The colder something gets, the slower those molecules are moving. So something can keep getting faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, arguably, and something can keep getting slower and slower and slower and slower. But something will eventually get so slow that it stops moving altogether. So we would say, yeah, there is a limit to how cold something can get because the molecules just completely stop moving. And now it's what we would write down here, something like that for our explanation. Let's go ahead and jump to number two, which is talking about temperature and redefining our understanding of temperature. Like we said, we want to move to this uh, understanding of temperature as the movement of molecules. Um, so what does the article Absolute Zero tell us about what temperature really means after the class discussion? If you have your ideas changed, if your ideas have changed, revise your answer below. Um, what is temperature? We kind of just talked about that, right? Uh, the definition of temperature is the uh, average, uh, 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 oh, oh, average speed of the molecules in a uh, substance or a, a, a thing, right? So that's what you could say here. Let's move on to number two. All right, so how do we actually put a number to temperature? Because we're going to have to do that in this class. One of the things that we have to do is find an average. Now, students, I, I hear it so often. Mr. Wigan, this isn't math class. This is science. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. You can do math all day long, and you don't have to know anything about science. You can do as math to your heart's content and never pick up a science book, but you are never going to be able to do science without math. You have to have math in science. It's just how it is. Um, there's so many measurements, there's so many calculations, so many things to process and find out. Well, one of the most basic things that we're finding out right now is 
average. Um, a lot of my students, they have not learned how to find an average yet in their math classes. So we're gonna talk about that right now. We're gonna go over some examples. Here's our definition, average. <laughs> A number that summarizes a set of data and that can be computed by adding all the numbers in a list and then dividing by the number of numbers in the list. What? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. That's gotta be the worst definition of average I've ever heard. Like, how is somebody supposed to not know anything about what an average is and then get some sort of information from that definition? I don't know, I don't know. Amplify, you do a lot of things well. This definition, uh, but we do have some good examples, and they do actually break down the steps really well right here. I like this. How to find an average. So when you find an average, you have a bunch of data. And what you're trying to do is almost finding like the middle point of that data. And that's the average. A lot of us know the term average, but we don't necessarily know how to calculate an average. So we have these three numbers here. We have four, we have five, and we have three. Cool. So there's three steps to finding an average. Step one, add up all the numbers. Okay, maybe these are temperatures. Maybe these are numbers of students in classes. Uh, maybe these are how many cheeseburgers uh, you eat every single day in the week. Whatever it is, you're adding up all of the numbers, all of them together. And then you get something. So four plus five plus three is 12. Great, step two, count the number of numbers. Wait, that sounds kind of confusing. Don't let it be. How many numbers do I have here? I have one, I have two, I have three. Okay, so I have three pieces of data that I have put in here. Great, we're gonna put that right there, three. And then step three, divide, that's it. Divide the total by the number of numbers. So this, divide this by this, and then you get your average. Now, this is nice and clean, right? Four, great. It's not always gonna be like that. Most of the time you're gonna have something with like a bunch of decimal places after it, um, so, but for example sake, this is great. This is great. So let's, let's do another example. How about two and three and four? What would be the average of those three numbers? Two and three and four. Well, step one, what do we do? We add them up. Two plus three is five. Okay. Five plus four is nine. Great. That's my total. Now, how many numbers did I add together? I added three numbers. So nine divided by three equals three. Oh, that's my average, cool. Um, that's how you do it. Step one, step two, step three. Uh, <laughs> some students just like to guess, don't do that. It'll be pretty obvious. Um, so here's some practice right here. Uh, calculating, cal calculating, calculating the average speed of molecules. Below are two diagrams that show things made of molecules moving at different speeds, okay? So these numbers are supposed to represent uh, the speeds, the circles are representing molecules. So the numbers are the speeds of each of these individual molecules. What kind of thing is made out of six molecules? Not, nothing. Calculate the average speed of the molecules in diagram one and diagram two by adding the numbers together and dividing by the number of molecules in the diagram, just like we saw in the last slide, step one, step two, step three. Be sure to show your work when you're finished. Answer the questions below. So <clears throat> you're going to tell me, what is the average speed of the molecules in diagram one, average speed of the molecules in diagram two, and then based on our understanding of temperature being the average speed of the molecules in a substance or a thing, which of these has a higher temperature? Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> Go ahead, work on that for a little bit, and then uh, come back to me. You thought I was going to give you the answer, but I'm not going to give you the answer. Uh, but we can talk about it. Let me know. And we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll go through the answers together. Next, we're going to be using the modeling tool. Now, I have, ta-da, put it into a Google drawing right here and attached it to your lesson so that you can make a copy of it and you can edit it for yourself, okay? Um, just to make things a little bit easier. So what do we have to do with this modeling tool? Well, let's go find out which tab was I. Oh, perfect, this one. Use the modeling tool. Uh, differences in temperature sheet to help you show the Riverdale Prince to help you show the Riverdale principle what happens when the air inside Riverdale School gets warmer. Cool. Goal: create a model that shows the differences between warmer and cooler air. Here's what we got to do in the colder air space. Where was that? Where was that? Oh, right here. Colder air. Got it. Colder air. Uh, in the colder air space, draw how the molecules in the air look when the air is colder. In the warmer air space. 
draw how the molecules in the air look when the air is warmer. When you finish, write a short explanation of your model at the bottom of your sheet. Okie dokie. So where are we going to write that explanation? You can make a text box and you can like put it anywhere over here on the side. It's fine. Here are two temperature gauges and here's what we see, what we, what we should know about our temperature gauges. This must mean this is a cold temperature. This is a warm temperature. Now in the future, you're going to actually have to put the temperature gauges on your model. This one, it's done for you. You're welcome. What you are going to have to do is you're going to have to decide what kind of molecules you want to put up there. Now, the molecules are these circles, right? These little lines represent how fast they're going. You know, and like you draw a little cartoon and you show like the, the lines showing that the person's moving or whatever. That's what those lines are representing, okay? So the longer the lines, the faster your molecule is moving. The shorter the lines, the slower your molecule is moving. So you need to decide what kind of molecules am I going to draw in this warmer air section? What kind of molecules am I going to draw in this colder air section? And then draw them there. That's it. And then tell me why you put those molecules where you did. All right. So do that and uh, come back to me. All right. Now, remember, remember, we this whole thing started with this school that was freezing cold, the heater's broken, and we need to help the principal pick a heating system for the school. So we're trying to understand the basics of how heat, I don't want to say it like that, how heat works um, so that we can make the best recommendation. So here we go. Here's our heating systems. Below are the two diagrams showing the proposed heating systems being considered by the principal of Riverdale School. Based on what you know so far, answer the questions below. Remember, let's remind ourselves, here's heating system number one. Proposal number one, water heater system. All right, the morning air temperature is 11 degrees Celsius outside. It's pretty cold. Uh, and every day, we heat up this reservoir of water to 39 degrees Celsius, okay, every single day, and then we pump it throughout the school. At night, it all gets pumped back in, and we heat it up again, okay? Start the process all over again. Proposal number two, the groundwater system. Same air temperature outside. Ah, but this is different. Now we have a much larger reservoir of groundwater. This gets pumped all throughout the school, but it doesn't go back into the reservoir. It just gets pumped somewhere else. Um, hopefully somewhere responsible to pump a whole bunch of water. But this, if we notice, this is only heated up to 30 degrees Celsius, whereas our water heater system was heated to 39 degrees Celsius. Did I say this was heated? That is not heated. That is just the normal state of the groundwater. It is always 30 degrees. So we're going to pump that water in, and then we're going to pump more water into our reservoir, and that water is already 30 degrees Celsius. We don't have to change it. Now, a lot of students... They say, well, this system won't work very well when it's cold outside because the groundwater will be cold. Actually, the groundwater temperature doesn't change. The groundwater temperature is going to stay the same, even if it's really cold outside. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so let's go back down here. Here are our questions. Consider the molecules in the two proposed systems. How are they the same? And how are they different? Write whatever you feel like you need to write right here. And then at this point, I think the, ah, which one will warm... Riverdale School more. Don't worry, don't worry. If you change your mind later, that's fine, okay? But go ahead and answer that and then come back to me. Homework, revisiting the anticipation guide. Um, so, hey, we've answered these questions before, but we're coming back to them like we often do because we like to, we, we like to revisit our, the way that we thought before and see how our thinking may have changed and grown and evolved along the way. So below are two statements from the anticipation guide that you completed at the beginning of this chapter. Look back at each statement, decide whether you agree or disagree with it at this point. Then try revising each statement to make it more complete or correct. Ooh, I like this. So we have two statements over here on the left. The first one, temperature is a measure of how hot or cold something is. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Great. Write that down. How could you make that statement even better? How could you add some of what you've learned about temperature so far to that statement to make it more complete, to make it more scientific, maybe? Let's look at this next statement. When something heats up, it moves faster, and when it cools down, it moves slower. Do you agree? Do you disagree? How could you revise that statement to be more complete or correct? If you disagree with the statement, you need to correct it. If you agree with this statement, 
Well, let's make it more complete. We might have more information we could add to it. So you're going to do that. Guess what? Guess what? This homework right here, the one that says self-assessment optional, I'm going to actually make it optional. You don't have to do it. Normally you do, but I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, it's optional um, this time. If you would like to, I love for you to do it. It's a great exercise, um, but I will make that optional for today. Um, and then after you finish number five, the homework, if you, did, if you want to do the optional, that's great. We'll see you next time.